Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to using a transistor as a NOT gate, a NOT gate or an inverter. So let's say you have a digital signal and you need to invert that digital signal from a low to a high or a high to a low. That's what a NOT gate can be used for. And we'll look at an example using both an NPN transistor and a PNP transistor. So what is a transistor? Let me go over briefly what a transistor is. So a transistor is a semiconductor device used to amplify and switch electronic signals and electrical power. It is composed of semiconductor materials with at least three terminals. Those terminals are the base, the emitter, and the collector. And basically you'll see for our NOT gate, we're essentially using this, we're using the switching action of, of a transistor. And by applying the, the signal that we want to invert to the base, we can then, using the either the collector or the emitter connection use that as the output of our NOT gate. And, and I'll, I'll show an example setup of that. Here are some packages for transistors. You know, the, the biggest one here is for high powered switching or yeah, high powered switching. Then you can see smaller packages all the way down to a uh, surface mount package. This package right here is what we'll be using in our example. And for the NOT gate type applications, you shouldn't need a high powered uh, transistor because you're just switching digital logic and digital logic is not high power. Uh, one clarification, when I talk about a transistor, I'm talking about a bipolar junction transistor. I'm not talking about MOSFETs in this example, although a MOSFET would work very similar. I'm not talking about MOSFETs, I'm talking about BJTs. So what is a, uh, a NOT gate or an inverter? Well, if you're watching this video, you probably know what it is, but it basically is going to convert one a digital level from a high to a low or from a low to a high. It, it inverts it. And why would you use this? Well, let's say you have two different chips. Let's say you have an Arduino and some other chip on it, and you want to have a reset circuit for each chip. But let's say Arduino takes a low for a reset, and the other chip takes a high for a reset. Well, if you want to use the same circuit or the same reset control, you don't want to have two different reset buttons. You want a way to invert that reset signal for one of the, for either the Arduino or the other chip, so you can use that same circuit. Uh, another example would be if, if a chip has an enable input to turn it on or off. If, if you have two different chips and their enable inputs are different high and low, you may want to, to invert it. So those are some examples of why you would want to invert a or have a NOT gate for a, a digital logic level. You know, I mentioned NPN and PNP in the beginning. The NPN and the PMP just mean the different types of semiconductor material that are put together, a negative doped and a positive doped. The NPN is denoted with this arrow pointing out, and the PNP is denoted with the arrow pointing in. So you're going to see that depending on the, the signals we have applied, the voltage levels will determine how each one turns on. And I'll explain what I mean by turn on in a second. But the NPN and PNP are just made of different materials, but they're all still three terminal devices with a base collector and emitter. So using a transistor as a NOT gate, the base acts as the input. So if we input a low, we want a high to come here at the output. So the output for an NPN is going to be at the collector. R2 just serves as a current limiter because... Oh, Theoretically or ideally, we'd like the base to be act like an open, but really some current flows between the base and the emitter. So R2, I'm going to use a 1 kilo ohm value. Uh, that's a typical safe value to use. I just use that to limit the current flow to real low current. So we'll get our input, and if we get a high on an NPN, it turns this, it turns the transistor quote unquote on, and we get current flowing, and the transistor acts like a short. So a high here will make this act like a short, so our output is essentially tied to ground. It's tied to a low. So that's how it inverts it. Now if we have a low here on the base, Q1 or the NPN transistor doesn't turn on, so it acts like an open. So that means VCC will just be dropped across the transistor. R1 here serves as where the voltage will drop when the transistor is totally turned on. So all we're doing is what might be known as forward biasing the transistor to saturation so it acts like a short and we'll get uh, a low on our output or we want a a low on R2 and that'll act to make the transistor act like an open or being cut off and we'll get our high at the output.
So you can see here for the MPN, we want to make the base more positive than the emitter, which is tied to ground, to turn it on. PMP is just the opposite. We want to make the base more negative than the emitter. And what I did here is I just switch around the resistor and the output. So we can still get the PNP to also act like a NOT gate by switching around the position. So if R2 is zero, the PNP transistor will turn on in saturation, act like a short, and we'll get voltage drop across R1, so our output will be high. And if we get five volts or 3.3 volts at the base, the PMP transistor will be off, it'll act like an open, and we'll get the voltage drop across the transistor and not across R1 until you'll have a low there. Now one thing to note, the PNP transistor, we, when I say we want to make the base more negative than the emitter, it doesn't mean there needs to be a negative voltage at the base, it just means that the voltage at the base has to be more negative than the emitter. And for the transistors that I'm going to be using, and these are common transistors, very popular pop model number transistors, the 2N3904 is the NPN, and the 293906 is the PNP one. And their saturation voltage, and when I say saturation, that's, that's to make them act like a short, is 0.95 volts. But I think they can take up to 6 volts on the base. So if you have an Arduino that's 5 volts or an Arduino that's 3.3 volts, you can use that to turn this on or off, whereas logic levels for this NOT gate. Oh, lastly, I forgot I had this on here. Lastly, I show sort of the output curve of a transistor. So a transistor can be used like a switch, and that's sort of how we're using it. We, we either make it act like a short or we make it act like an open. Really though, a uh, transistor can also be used for amplifying signals, and, and that's where you use it in this active region. But what we're doing is we're using it in cutoff to act like an open, and we're using it in saturation to act like a short. I should mention that depending on some of these current values depends on what region you're in, but you know, for the most part, we, you can kind of ignore that and just know that if you apply uh, a high or a low to the base, it's either going to turn it on or off depending if it's an NPN or PNP. You need to have some type of current flow though from the collector to emitter for it to turn on and off. Okay, here's my setup for an example to show how this works. Uh, I connect the bases of the MPN and the PMP to digital two and digital three, and this is what I'll use, you know, as my NOT gate input. So I'm, you know, putting some logic level out. I then get the opposite logic level on either the emitter, in the case of the PMP, or the collector, in the case of the MPN, and then I read that value in with D4 for the MPN and D5 for the PMP. So I'm just spitting out logic levels and then reading back. The result and I would expect to get you know the opposite result that I put out. Some things to mention, I mentioned that the resistor at the base is sort of optional but it's good to have it there because it reduces current flow. If you don't have it and you're dealing with logic chip that doesn't have a high current output you might trip it or use too much current and things won't work right. For the other resistor you can see for one example I used a 3 kilo ohm resistor and for another one I used a 1 kilo ohm resistor. So, so you can play around with different resistance values. You do need, you don't want to use too low of a resistance or you actually get a lot of current flowing and you'll just waste power. So you want to pick something, you know, in the kilo ohm range and, and one kilo ohm, three kilo ohms are, are, are good values to use. Okay, so here's our setup. Here's our code. So I create, you know, variables for each one of the pins that I'm using. I turn two and three to outputs and then I turn four and five to inputs that correspond to the, the other output. I set up my stereo monitor. I then digital write uh, each one to low. I, I print out some information and then I read the result of each one. And we would expect it to be opposite of, of what we did for the digital write. I then delay for a little bit and then I do the opposite value and read that in. So let's take a look at that example. So here's our setup. I have the NPN on the right and I have the PNP in the middle. This connection over here is actually a, a DMM or a multimeter where I'll show the voltage level changing in the, in the video. And here's, of course, is my Arduino. So let me turn it on. Let me start the video. There's my setup. You can see in the serial monitor, as soon as it comes into focus, I, I read it over and over and you can kind of see. So I, I set it low and we read one and one. And I set it high and we read zero and, and so on and so forth. So the whole thing is 
whatever in whatever input logic level you put in you'll get the opposite one out and then next I believe I go to the DMM and I'll pause it there again so here we're we're high we're getting 4.99 volts DC here we're low so now remember this is measuring across the NPN so the NPN is not perfect so when it turns on and it acts like a short it's really not a short it's really like you know some very low resistance value below a milli ohm probably excuse me not below a milli ohm but below an ohm and so you can see there's actually a 36.75 millivolts being there so we're not completely at ground but that's well low enough to to read a low logic level uh, in logic devices so we can just assume that that's zero but that's why it's not exactly zero is because you know the uh, the transistor's not a perfect short. Okay, that's it for this video using a transistor as a NOT gate. If you want to get the code that I used in this video, go to my blog. If you want more details on transistors, there's a great website, Electronic Tutorials. It talks about how they work, you know, how you can use them as amplifiers, how you can use them as switches. Uh, it's a great tutorial if you want more deeper dive into transistors. If you haven't already, subscribe to my Forstronics YouTube channel. And thank you for watching.